Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. And this is one of my favorite topics to talk about is optimization. Now, of course, optimizing too early is probably a mistake in your projects, but these are things that you do have to think about, especially if you're going to be a games or a graphics programmer. So what I'm going to focus on today is talking about alignment, padding, and some of these issues. So with that said, let's go ahead and create an example so I can show you the importance of this topic. So what I'm going to go ahead and do on the right here is just create some new class here. And let's just call it some structure here. Maybe it's the actual game state where we're just trying to keep track of things. And maybe there's some important things that we need to keep track of, and maybe we have many of them here. Okay, so maybe there is a bool for some checkpoint that's hit in, say, a video game. Maybe you have a floating value for the score. And maybe there's some short value for the uh, number of players at some time here. Okay, so this looks like a pretty reasonable struct to create here. In fact, I'm going to just draw it so it's on the right side here. Game state here. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is actually give you a little bit of a pop quiz here, and I'll show you how to get the answer, in fact, is how many bytes does this actual structure take? And let's go ahead and just programmatically figure this out, and I'll let you also think about it while I'm typing. But we can use, recall, the size of operator. So let's go ahead and just create one of these game states. I'll call it GS, and let's do GS of our checkpoint. So that's the Boolean value. And I'll do an end line here. And we need the score. And we need the number of players here. Okay, so that we have everything in our particular uh, structure here. So if I go ahead and compile this program, and I'll give it a run here, well, you can go ahead and try to remember what the sizes of these are. Now, they could vary on different architectures. That's why I'm showing you here. But I'm on a 64-bit system here. So usually a bool should be one uh, byte, a float four, and a short two. So let's go ahead and confirm that. And in fact, I get one byte for our bool, four bytes for our score, and two for this uh, short here. Okay, so if I go ahead and check what the size is of our actual game state here, so size of game state, we would expect this to be the sum of these components here, one, four, and two here, okay? So let me go ahead and save this, go ahead and give it a run. But in fact, we get 12 here. <laughs> so this is a little bit weird here because this is what we're expecting, right? Our game state here, one byte for the uh, checkpoint, checkpoint. Then we had a little bit more here, four for the score. We said that was four bytes. And then the short for the number of players was two bytes. So again, last I checked, that value should be seven. So why is it in fact 12 here? Well, the answer has to do with this idea of padding here and alignment. Okay, so this idea that passing around seven bytes of information in our actual architecture uh, doesn't really work. We can't be that precise. In fact, what our CPUs like to do is usually send things in powers of two or four, and then that's a little bit more convenient. So actually what we have with this particular object is some padding that is added here. So our game state object here actually looks something like this, where I've got a bool which is one byte, and then another four bytes, or excuse me, three bytes to make four total here. And then we've got our float, which is uh, four bytes still, four bytes. So again, this bool is one byte plus three bytes of padding. And then our short here, which is two bytes plus two bytes of padding. So two bytes plus two bytes of adding here, okay? Uh, so that's the idea here. So that's how we get to 12. Okay, so is this a problem though? Well, we have 12 here, 12 bytes instead of 
7, so we're essentially wasting 5 bytes of information. Let's see how bad this can get. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just comment this out here for now. And let's just go ahead and in a loop here, and let's just go ahead and create a thousand of these objects here. And again, just to make things a little bit worse here, I'm going to create these as pointers and just create new game states here. Okay. So I compile this, it works fine. Now, effectively, what I want to do is just create a memory leak so we can measure how many bytes of information that we have wasted here. So I'm going to use the program uh, Valgrin on Linux to do this. Valgrin will run our program here. And this costs 12,000 bytes, so 1,000 times 12 bytes each, okay? So that's how many bytes we have here. Okay, so let's hold on to that number and think about things for just a moment. Now, and just looking at this particular object here, is there something that we could do to optimize this? And if we go ahead and stare at this lower figure here, well, I have three bytes of padding here. And my short here, which is two bytes, what if I rearrange things so that I had the bool, then the short, and then the float? Or alternatively, which might be an easier strategy, I have the float first, and then the short, and then the bool. So sort of largest to smallest uh, data type. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to rearrange things. So I'll put the score, which is the largest here, the short here, and then the bool here. Okay, so now... Before I run this experiment, let's just go ahead and check some of our data here. So I'm going to check the size of each of our fields, which should be the same. In fact, I'll order them so that they're consistent with how they're laid out here. And the size of our object. Okay, so uh, let me compile this. And whoops, one little uh, error here because we need a game state. GS here, like we had before. Compile, and oops, I don't want to do Valgrin yet. If I just give this a run here, well, now we are in fact just at 8 bytes. Because 4 bytes for our float, 2 for our short, 1 for our bool, and then again, as I mentioned, we'd like to have sort of nice powers of 2 that we can fit things in. Now we'll talk a little bit about why or how we're getting this one extra byte of padding versus some other number in a moment here. But notice again that our structure is only four here. So again, if I rework our example and have our game states here, let's go ahead and just comment this out here and show you how much memory is allocated by rerunning Valgren and essentially creating a memory leak. This time only 8,000 bytes. So we've essentially saved 4,000 bytes. Okay, so that's not a trivial uh, number. That's actually a very meaningful number, especially if you're creating lots of objects throughout a game or running on a mobile device. So these types of things matter with how we lay out our structures. And I've just given you a little bit of a formula for how you can do this by starting with the largest data type first and then uh, going in descending order. Okay, that gives you a chance to make things compact. Now, why was this four bytes here? Okay. Well, let me go ahead and give you another little helping tool here in C++. And I'll go ahead and show you here. There is alignment of and shorter, but uh, more simple to use, align of here. Okay, so if I go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and get rid of our uh, performance experiment here. Actually, I'll just comment it out because we might want to do another. If I just run to see the a line of a game state object, which again I'll create here. Let's go ahead and see what that value is here. Okay, so if I go ahead and compile this and run it, uh, oops, without Falgren, we'll see that this is four. Okay, so where does that four come from? Well, essentially the largest type that we have here. Okay, that's going to be the type that determines how we're aligning our data or each of the fields. Okay, so what if I change float, for instance, for our score to a double? Okay, so we'll hold on to these numbers here. And I'll actually add another um, N line here, just so that it's separated out. So let's recompile this. Let's rerun it. 
And well, now we'll see our alignment is eight. That's our largest type. That's how this structure is set up here. So this is going to take eight bytes for the score here. And then the next thing that we're aligning with is eight bytes. So how much information can I fit in eight bytes here? Well, two bytes for the short, one for the bool, and then I'm left with five bytes of padding here because our alignment is in eight bytes here. So now our data type is actually 16 here. Now, if I had other fields, for instance, I could fit those in here. So for example, let's add a few more bools here and just say one, two, three, for example, this shouldn't change the size of our structure because again, that can fit within this uh, eight uh, bytes here. Eight for the score, two for the number of players, and then one, two, three, four more bytes here for a total of six bytes for that next set of eight here. Okay, so that's the idea. So again, just taking a look at our diagram again, we have to think about our alignment. And our systems like to put things in nice powers of two, and you can use the align of keyword to figure out what those numbers are gonna be and how much padding there can be between each field. And again, by logically laying things out here, by perhaps starting with a float here. So let's draw our final data structure here, where we would have say a float, then a short, and then a bool, we can get this down to eight bytes of information and have less sort of internal fragmentation or wasted data here. Okay, so this is just an empty padded byte here. All right, folks, so I hope that was an interesting lesson and gave you a little bit of an insight into optimization when it comes to memory usage. That is the size of our data structures. And this might be, again, a little bit perplexing to think about, but again, our hardware likes to work with nice numbers, so often the data will get padded. Essentially, the compiler will just put in some empty bytes there so that things are nice powers of two, essentially, for our data types meaning that we're aligning to sizes of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. So if this video helps you understand a little bit about optimization when it comes to size and memory usage, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up or a like, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future optimizations when they come up in later lessons. So again, this is also one of our first videos in this series where we're talking a little bit about class design. And now you can at least think about class design when it comes to your member variables that you have and how you want to lay them out and why that is important. All right, folks, with that said, we'll see you in the next lesson.